There's much to talk about. Let's get to our panel. Joining us here in Washington is Dylan Murray. He's a policy advisor with the Nature Conservancy. With us from London is the director of the Global Warming Policy Foundation, Benny Pizer. Alvin Lin is the director of China Climate and Energy Policy at the Natural Resources Defense Council. He joins us from Beijing. And David Doniger is the senior strategic director of the NRDC's Climate and Clean Energy Program. Thanks to all of you for joining us. David, let me start with you. Uh, as we saw in our report there, our reporter describing some of the conditions uh, around the globe right now, droughts, melting ice, uh, storms, wildfires. Make the connection for us between these conditions and what we call climate change. Right. So the loading of the atmosphere with the pollution th that comes from burning fossil fuels, primarily carbon dioxide, other gases, is accumulating heat in the atmosphere and that heat is translating into changes in the weather. And the most obvious changes are changes in the extremes. You get more heat waves, uh, you get stronger storms, you get more torrential rainfalls, and paradoxically, you get worse droughts in other places, at, all at the same time. Uh, this, uh, these effects are becoming so pronounced that scientists are now able to attribute uh, things like Hurricane Harvey's terrible rainfall uh, to climate change. In other words, they're able to say it would not have happened, uh, not with the same ferocity, maybe not at all, if it weren't for this pollution that we've loaded into the atmosphere and we keep, we keep adding to. Right, so these effects that you are talking about, David, are they getting increasingly worse and will they get even worse? That's what, what all the science is telling us. Uh, more heat waves, stronger storms, droughts, uh, more events of the kinds that, you're, uh, that you surveyed. And uh, they have a huge human toll uh, in the United States, in, uh, in all parts of the world, and especially in parts of the world uh, where people live closer to the edge, where they don't have the, um, the, the um, economic wherewithal to bounce back. But even in the United States, Puerto Rico uh, has been with, most people have been without power for months now since the hurricane. Um, uh, huge numbers, huge damages in Houston and in Florida. Okay, let me go to Benny Pizer in London. And Benny, as we are all aware, there's been a fierce debate about what causes climate change. The debate uh, being between those who believe that it's a natural phenomenon and those who believe that it's caused by human activity. Uh, when we look at these conditions and effects that David has been talking about, these storms, these wildfires, melting ice, what is your view on what is going on here? Well, I think it's extremely important to separate what happens on an annual basis. Uh, extreme weather events have always happened, will always happen. Um, they just happen. Uh, the question is whether they are getting worse. And the claim has been made that in the future we will see much worse of the extreme weather events. But I'm more interested to look at the last 30 years, which basically is the period that defines climate change. 30 years, if you look back at the last 30 years, which are also the 30 years of uh, warming, um, the mixture, the, the picture is rather mixed. So in terms of wildfires, there is quite strong evidence to suggest that on a global level, the number of wildfires has declined. Uh, when it comes to hurricanes, um, Actually, on a global level, the uh, hurricane activity last year was actually below average. It was just the U.S. that was hammered very severely. So you have to look at the long uh, term and at the global level. You can't just cherry pick individual events and say, well, this is climate change. So are you saying then that these are natural phenomena, it's a cycle of climate that we're seeing? Of course, they are natural. And no one <laughs> doubts that they are natural. The question is whether our CO2 emissions are making the natural mm -hmm. extreme weather events worse. That is the claim. And I would say the jury is still out. Okay. 
Alvin uh, Lin, in uh, Beijing, China is already taking steps to combat climate change. It's lessening its, or trying to lessen its dependence on fossil fuels. It's also sending up satellites to monitor the level of carbon in the air. What's the effect been so far? Uh, well, for you know, nearly the past decade, China has been really focused on uh, changing its energy structure. That means, you know, having more wind and solar, reducing its uh, reliance on coal. Uh, and of course, that brings uh, benefits for the climate, but also air pollution, uh, because uh, air pollution is a challenge in many developing countries, uh, including in China and in India. Um, and so the sooner that you can uh, shift from a fossil fuel-based uh, energy structure to wind and solar, which have zero emissions, um, the sooner you can have those air pollution and health benefits uh, for your citizens. Um, this is also really big business. You know, China was and has been uh, the largest investor in wind and solar and has um, really a lot of the largest wind and solar companies around the world. Um, the same with electric vehicles. You know, it's making this a national priority to shift into clean energy technologies. Um, so it's good business, um, but it's also good for the environment. Dylan, let me ask you first, what do you make of uh, Benny's view that the jury's still out on what causes climate change and, you know, in consequence, these extreme no, conditions? No, wasn't what I was saying. Sorry. Yeah, so I... Well, well sorry, Benny. You, you said the jury is still out on what, well, what's driving climate change? No, 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 no. Yeah. I'm sorry, but that was not what I was saying mm -hmm. and not what I'm thinking. So please don't uh, turn my words around. Okay, well, let me uh, the ask, question well, let me, was let me ask whether... You to, all right, just clarify that for us. What is your view on what causes climate change? Well, obviously, it's a combination of natural and human factors. Okay. And we are certainly contributing to climate change. But that's not the issue mm -hmm. you were asking. You were asking questions about extreme weather events and whether they're getting worse. What is your view on that, Dylan? So that's a good question. Um, uh, we, we find that extreme events are getting worse, in fact. Um, for example, we take the wildfires out in California. Um, seven of the 10 largest, most extreme uh, wildfires in California have happened in the past 14 years. Um, wildfires have always, of course, been part of the natural ecosystem and natural cycles in that state. But uh, my colleagues uh, that work throughout California found that um, they're unable, they have to find new practices to deal with this new type of wildfire that's emerging. Um, we find that, that across the board in any of the states that we work in the United States or any of the countries that we work in around the world. Let me ask you this, Dylan. Carbon emissions rose by 2% last year, despite mm -hmm. these vigorous attempts to use renewable sources of energy. Um, what does that tell us? Right. Good question. Um, so renewables is a really important part of the picture, right? So um, last year, I believe, uh, I think there was 3% greater investment in, in renewables. I think it reached, I, I believe, around one-third of a trillion dollars. Um, that's a huge amount of investment, and the private sector gets this is a cost-effective uh, uh, effort, uh, solution to climate change. Um, but that's not enough. Uh, we need to go a lot farther, a lot faster in the renewable sector. And that's not the only solution either. Um, we need ev every solution on the table to tackle this challenge. Um, for example, the Nature Conservancy is finding that nature can be a really big part of the solution set. Um, my colleagues at the Nature Conservancy, uh, our scientists have found, recently published a new paper that uh, says that between now and 2030, one third of those solutions can come from nature itself. So reducing deforestation, figuring out better agricultural practices. These are all uh, at hand solutions that we can, we can use to pair with renewables and other solutions that are out there to tackle climate change head on. David, President Trump is a climate change skeptic. He doesn't believe that this is being caused by human activity. He's pulled the United States out of the Paris Accord. Um, what kind of impact does that have on global efforts yeah. to combat climate change? Two or three points. One is that, paradoxically, Trump's uh, effort to pull us out uh, has galvanized um, other leaders around the world to redouble their commitment and also galvanized uh, state and local leaders and business leaders in the United States. There's a whole movement called We're Still In. Uh, the second point I'd make is that um, uh, President Trump can't actually withdraw the United States from the agreement until, coincidentally, the day after the 2020 presidential election. So we might be out of the agreement for a short time. Uh, the next president can re-enter uh, the United States. So my point is that the Paris Agreement 
uh, will be here a lot longer than the Trump administration. The climate change problem will be here a lot longer <laughs> right. than the Trump administration. And the American efforts under the Clean Air Act uh, and other laws will be here longer. So this is a, a bad time in U.S. policy, but actually the American business um, uh, uh, trends continue to be in the right direction. The power sector is continuing to shed uh, coal and move towards uh, renewables and uh, energy efficiency. Uh, the auto sector is continuing to improve, um, and uh, state and local policies are moving forward. Um, sometimes uh, uh, you have to go through this, but we come out the other side with a stronger commitment from the United States to tackle this problem. So uh, the commitments that the United States made uh, when they signed the uh, Paris Climate Accord, they would still have to fulfill those, implement those until 2020. Well, the goals of the Paris Agreement are, are selected by each country for themselves. Right. Um, it's quite clear that the Trump administration is doing nothing to, at the, govern, at the federal governmental level to achieve them and moving us backwards. Mm -hmm. But the power sector is continuing to clean itself up, for example. Even as uh, uh, Trump and his EPA administrator are trying to repeal the so-called clean power plan, the power sector is continuing to invest in cleaner uh, uh, energy supply. Um, so we might actually get uh, a good distance towards those goals, even with the total failure of federal policy. Okay, we are going to take a break right now. More of our conversation when we return. Stay with us. You're watching The Heat.